Hey guys, today's video was filmed in early March before COVID-19 was a pandemic. Right now, we are not traveling and are self-isolating in Tennessee. On to today's video. I know this sounds crazy. I think years ago, didn't I tell you I wanted to be an astronaut? So we were 100% honest on how we got picked for this. <laughs> what? Hey, <laughs> All right, we're right back to the spectators. I'm your son, babe. I'm your girl. Three, two. <laughs> it's not really going to take off. So you're totally about to go on a launch pad. All right, we're going to get out here on the fast surface then. Did you go to the moon? Would you go to the moon? Nope. nope. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> you guys will see the biggest doors in the world. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> totally got chills right now. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> that was nuts. What's up, fellow journeyers? So I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. When we said yes to NASA Social, I thought this would be pretty cool. This was this was awesome. <laughs> So some of the stuff you saw quick clips of in the intro video with the B-roll, like you can go to Kennedy Space Center, and I did as a kid, and you can get on the bus and they'll drive you around at a distance to see some things and say, oh, there's the building over there that has this, and oh, there's that over there, because it's a 40-minute ride. But we spent days, a couple of days, getting off the bus, going inside these places, getting the inside scoop. It's unlike anything we expected, unlike anything we've experienced in five years as RVers. And we are super pumped to share it with you guys because in a sense, instead of viewing things from afar, and I still definitely go to Kennedy Space Center, get on the bus, see these things. But with this video, you get to know sort of what's behind the curtain on some of this stuff. What's inside that building that you're seeing from afar and maybe somebody's telling you about in the bus. We're going to get to walk into some of those buildings. We're going to get to look and step foot on and experience firsthand. And I'm super pumped that we get to share that with you guys for this video. You gonna take care of Maldonado while we're going? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Make sure she stays uh, out of trouble. Okay. It's gonna be a hard job. Right eye to make short eye words and to finish this. This is when it comes in handy to have a retired okay. school teacher <laughs> as grandma who can take over school while we're gone. <laughs> we didn't really, uh, we didn't plan this out big time. We actually had a whole other route planned on the west side of Florida and then Rissa. Came across this and um well one of our patrons had sent me out a link for it and was like hey check this out they're doing a media launch and i was like huh that's pretty cool but i thought and eh, there's probably no way that that it would work out <laughs> and then it did and so yeah when when you get clearance with nasa you just say okay we'll we'll go that way <laughs> so um this is an exciting surprise. So there's our bus. They're going to bus us over from the lot. I know this sounds crazy. I think years ago, didn't I tell you I wanted to be an astronaut? So this is like super cool to me. I was really bummed when we didn't get to see a launch earlier in the year. And so this worked out even, even better. So again, no idea what is what we got ourselves into, but I'm super excited about this. Get it? site where obviously a lot of the news conferences and stuff like that take place. Today you're going to go to the what's on board briefing later and get to hear from some of the scientists whose work is on this rocket right now or being loaded late tonight. Ponds is an exercise in managing water. So this is a, a clear version. Now there's a couple versions on the table. Uh, we thought at first that we would go this opaque version, or what we call the, 
the tuxedo look because it's got this kind of snappy black and white uh, coloration to it. Uh, a cell has a decent amount of light intensity because red and blue lights are most important for. Some of you 100% honest. I don't know how we got picked for this. <laughs> like, we went into the room and everybody like introduced themselves. Like uh, some really awesome people here. So I think learn it's meant to be for me to like. Essentially, we're working for NASA right now, right? I always wanted to work for NASA. I even saw on their Instagram page that they're hiring this month. Who knows? Just apply, babe. Just apply. Not, just apply. Okay. You never know, right? So I'm super excited to be here, and it's very interesting too. Essentially, yeah, we're we're part of NASA right now. <laughs> then told, we're gonna be on TV. I was there with a guard. Check it out, babe. <laughs> We were back row students. Well, I can stand up in the back row of the camera and not get anybody's way. That's usually my reasoning. So. <laughs> Did you grow up sitting in the back row in school or the front row? Or oh, no, I was not. I'm definitely a back row student. I wish both of us are back row students. <laughs> Good students. That's where all the introverts but, hang out. The back well, row. Well, the troublemakers. <laughs> it's got a bigger camera than I do. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jennifer Wolfinger with NASA's Office of Communications. No, it's uh, Joel, Joel Barney. I think I'm going to apply. Building is the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building. This is where they assemble a lot of the stuff that goes up, and they also do a lot of the nutritional stuff here, too. This is a huge door. Today is groundbreaking work in the sense that we're trying to set the stage to demonstrate that we can grow plants in space successfully, reliably, um, and do it in such a way that uses minimal resources and provides as much edible biomass as possible so that the food system that the astronauts bring forward when they get beyond low Earth orbit and they branch out to the Moon and Mars will be able to take advantage of the nutrients that we can provide with fresh crops. And so with this multi-spectral approach, See, there are multiple cameras up here at the front. Um, it's a fairly sophisticated camera. It's taking one image. It's really actually taking about 200 images of 10 nanometer wavelengths at a time. This is nice. Yeah. The end game is they want to go to Mars, right? That's that's yeah. the end yeah. game. But not just. But if you're going to Mars, right now the food that they have is only good for about three years, and they're figuring to take at least five years to go to Mars. So they need to figure out a way to produce their own food as they go along. So they're figuring out basically how to grow stuff in space. And um, the moon will be where they kind of go and do a lot of the research because instead of like going out to Mars and realizing, whoops, forgot whoops, something. <laughs> <laughs> this didn't work. So the next step is the moon to kind of do research to get to Mars. So it's like, let's grow our own food in space. So it's crazy. that's what we're checking out. And that's part of what the launch nice. with Dragon, you know, that we're, we're going to see, you know, that's what they're launching into space to test some of the stuff out and see how it does. So it's just, it's just, <laughs> so this is where the astronauts walk out before they get on their flights. So cool. <laughs> or Marissa's gonna walk out when she gets that, that job in a couple weeks or something. <laughs> Is that true or? It's true. So yesterday was about us getting oriented with media, um, seeing some inside scoop stop stuff. Today is still a combination of that and the launch. But this is one of my favorite parts. We get to take the kids and Donna and we get to go hang out at Kennedy Space Center. Where are we going, Hensley? Uh, you got the map. Uh, I guess we're going into here. We're going to some kind of building. Okay. Get in before it takes off. Three, two. <laughs> it's not really gonna take off. Go ahead. <laughs> Maybe. You want to give him high five? Cool. 
Exploring Mars will help us better understand our home, our past, and our future. Only learn better than going out. I'm your son, babe. <laughs> I'm your girl. Wow. So lots of things that make Atlantis a big deal, but basically the first reusable aircraft that NASA produced, and then over a period of 26 years, and I don't even know how many missions, um, they sent it up and back and up and back, and here it is, right here. Right here. Wow. Hensley is just... And this blown away, video. man. <laughs> she, she JJ's knows. got the guide out. Our kids yeah. are like into this. I asked Hensley if she would go into space. Hensley, would you go into space? I think I would be inside the conductor's engine. You would help Daddy people get to space. You're my helper. <laughs> hey, Mommy's mom, the person who's like, send hey, me up. Hey, mom, Dusters <laughs> is the engine, okay? Moving your joysticks around. Still Not right. tied to anything. That's crazy. This is the power switch. Oh, that's it right there? That turns yeah. the whole thing on? JJ's like, ooh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's funny that they use that to like quarantine them and we like lived in that, so. <laughs> She wanted me to bring this to remember her by. <laughs> it doesn't even show her face though. Like she's the one on the right. It's like cut her head off. Yeah. It's still sweet. <laughs> I was like, what is yes. this? It took me this no, way. this is my kid without the head. She and said, this... take this picture to remember me by. It's like, <laughs> it's <laughs> she, she met this little boy at a campground. It's not gonna get much cooler than this. <laughs> Wow. Dude. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is nuts. I'm just kind of at a loss for words. So we are obviously not at Kennedy Space Center anymore. We're back with NASA Social. Not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> no. This is nuts. So this is the VAB, which you can see this from our campground, and it looks, you can tell it's big. And, and really like, so VAB is the Vehicle Assembly Building, but this is where they're putting together rockets and shuttles and stuff like that. Well, if you've ever thought, hey, I wonder how you put together something that big. It's true, you can't just like go building out in your backyard <laughs> in the elements, so they need somewhere indoors yeah. to build it. So this thing is massive. The answer is a building to this fastness it's huge so this huge and it looks like it's one giant bay but it's really like multiple bays for multiple rockets or multiple projects whatever they have going on this isn't a building that you typically get on one of your tours so this is so cool that we get to you know kind of see like behind the scenes of mm -hmm. how this stuff really works because yeah. this is like beyond words it's, it's crazy like your mind can't even wrap around it so if you look above you you'll see some of the yellow cranes there's only a few people who are certified to operate those because the training um, is so in depth. Um, you can imagine when you have space flight hardware, you have to be incredibly delicate uh, when you're lifting those. Is so this the external see, tank? Uh, yeah, see those two holes yes. right there and there? So that's where the solid rocket boosters would come down. And then the external tank is this big one right here. Horizontal doors that open and then they have vertical ones, seven that kind of stack on top of each other. Um, so especially when the weather is nice and they want a breeze to come through, they'll open some of those up and you can look out. You guys will see the biggest doors in the world. Boom. <laughs> Takes 45 minutes for those to open. <laughs> Literally the biggest doors in the world. Rolls 
in here under the platform, then the platform goes on top of it, and then that's how they roll out to the launch pad. So from this high bay out to launch pad 39B, which we're gonna go to next, it takes the crawler about eight hours to get there. So this is what takes the rocket to the pad, right? Yeah. At one mile an hour, what they say, 30 gallons? 30 feet per gallon. 30 feet per gallon, something like that. But I mean, it's, that's, that's obviously than... it's hauling some stuff. <laughs> that's uh, better than our fifth wheel, I guess, right? Their, their facility is way closer to the beach. Look at this. Oh my goodness. It's like it's, something in another world. I know, it's blowing Look at, I mean, mind. look at all these Thinking, areas. I guess I'm just picturing, picturing them in here assembling and putting together like the rockets and shuttles and how cool. My mind's blown. <laughs> This is launch pad 39B, right? Oh, wow. They built this for Apollo. And this is one of their active launching pads right we're using right now. Wow. You can imagine that crawler we showed back at the VAB over here. Like it comes up this hill, but it has to keep the rocket level as it's coming up the hill. We are walking. On we're a rocket. Of yeah, the crawler. The path the crawler. of the crawler holding the rocket. It's eight hours to get up here and how many they can only go an hour and a half of driving it so they have it takes what like seven eight people to actually something drive like that it. And they have to train two years to drive it and we only put brick on the north side because unlike apollo and shuttle in this program all exhaust will go to the north so this is the trench for the flame look how huge I mean, it's just wow unfathomable the rocket oh, cool. right so about originally here. this whole thing was the flame trench for apollo but the new ones the flame i think only goes one direction so yeah, the rocket sits so sitting up here. The flames come down into this trench and bounce off of this and just shoot the flames out. No big deal, just walking around the flame trench. Are we getting off? <laughs> <laughs> no clue to get this close to it. Deal. That's a deal. <laughs> I've totally got chills right now. I mean in just a few hours we're gonna see we're gonna see this go up into space. That's crazy. I'm blown away. You like my words? <laughs> So this is not something we expect because you're not really supposed to be this close to these rockets, this close to launch. This, I mean, this is launching surprise. in a few hours. Um, this yeah, is definitely they did surprise. not tell us we no. were going to get to do no, no, this, no. and this is crazy awesome. And we're here with people that have done NASA social like four or five, six times, and they're like going crazy because apparently they've never. Yeah, they're winging out not, over there. <laughs> not what usually happens with this. So this is the Falcon 9. This is what it's all about. This is everything we're doing, everything we're watching. I learned a lot yesterday about what what these launches are for, what they're doing, the advances they're making, and essentially, because somebody had told me, oh, it's like they're delivering an Amazon order up to space, doing research on heart cells, so that's gonna be in there. Um, Adidas is doing product research, and then you have Delta faucets that are essentially gonna test uh, water and how to like minimize water usage but still getting pressure so they do all these like research things in space and just, I think a lot of us grew up like thinking of 
NASA and, and now SpaceX, but you just think of it as like it's, it's a race to see who can do the most in space, but it's way deeper than that. It's not so much just a badge of honor or anything like that. It's, they are doing research to figure out how to grow things on the space stations, which that's what this is doing. This is taking these supplies to the space station. Um, basically do an Amazon order. So <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's but they're trying to grow like these pick and eat green leafy vegetables and peppers so that people could essentially go to Mars and grow their own food and just pick their food and grow it on the way. So that's is that not mind blowing? That is awesome. And this is not I don't know if we've we haven't talked about I'm just gonna wait till the launch to talk about this but we're right here so like you're not really supposed to be within like three miles of the launch from this sonic boom, from the flames, from all that stuff going on. So to stand this close to the launch, granted it's not taking off right now, we would not <laughs> be here, but it's still crazy, crazy to be this close. Because this launch is close to midnight um, and the kiddos were gonna stay here we needed we needed somebody to come help us if we wanted to do this event so I called my mom up and was like hey would you be willing to come and stay with the kids while we do this rocket launch I said I applied for this thing online um, where you uh, with NASA and we got accepted can you come so we can do this launch <laughs> my favorite my favorite mom story is she's like well where is the rocket going <laughs> and I was like I, I really don't have a lot of information um, space the moon I don't know and uh, <laughs> what did you tell me I said well Marissa you should know where you're gonna be launched <laughs> She's like, well, I'd find out where they were sending me. And I was like, well, Mom, they're not sending me to the moon or to space. I'm just going to go watch it. I guess I did not clarify it. But I love that you think we're that adventurous that we would just, like, say, hey, come watch our kids while we go to space real quick. I, I knew you would take them up on it if they'd leave. Well, they asked for volunteers today, and I raised my hand. So I am going to space. Oh, my. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I wish. I, w I would have. T I would have totally went to space if they would let me. But did you go to the moon? To the moon? Why does everybody think I'm going to the moon? Would you go to the moon? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Nathan's getting him a quick nap. I can't stay up till midnight much anymore. <laughs> Wait for coffee. There we go. All right, 10 p.m. We gonna do this thing, babe? I've been born ready. All right, next time you see us, we're gonna be at the launch site. And we're here. Check out this uh, countdown. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so the, uh, yeah, the live feed cameras. SpaceX is somewhere over there. I'm not gonna get in front of that right now. So it all comes down to this. I've heard so many people say like getting to see one of these launches and like yeah. feel it, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so that's, I'm excited to like look, not only kinda, see it, the but that we're in, just it's feel not be the launch go cool off. So. The water, and we can't, there's no way we're able to capture that on camera East for you guys, but I hope, I hope we can get something because it's something you, need to, you definitely need to experience it. Whether it's here, yeah, Jetty Park, yeah. Manatee, Hammock, you know, yeah. well, that's a great option. There's, there's, there's lots of options, so. So it's venting and we're being told that's a good sign. That means they're probably gonna go for it. Hey, we'll there, the yeah. going. there he goes, there he goes. Here we go. Hi, Miko. Miko. There's Miko. Yep. Okay. Ready? Now we 
Stage step. Stage step. Stage step. And in three, two, one, you'll see the light of second stage. There it is. Second yeah. stage. Yes. Yeah. 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 you whatever I got on video I haven't seen it yet it's horrible <laughs> if you can come see that in person like the sonic boom oh, like it was pitch black almost when it like yes, scared yes. me to death I, did I, not I even know. knew it was coming what, what was that like nebula thing I don't that know. was going on is that when it like I'm gonna have to research now is it was, that when it goes through the atmosphere or something that I, was it was, was like insane. one thing after another like the launch is awesome and then you got the nebula going on and you got the, the ranch and you got the sonic the, boom and it's like <sighs> This has, been our, this has been our ride in the last couple of days, checking out this NASA stuff, so. I didn't um, even know I loved this stuff so much. That's what I love about this lifestyle. Like, I discover things about myself and things that, passions that I didn't even know I had. And now I'm like, this is awesome, incredible. I'm gonna be addicted now. Just come check it out. If you got an RV, it's super easy. Yeah, Jetty Park got an awesome We heard lots of people talk about Jetty Park that you they're gonna get, so. I mean, anything you could do to get out here and watch is just awesome, so. All right, we need to go. I think we're going to miss our bus. So <laughs> thank you so much, guys. We'll catch you later.